Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Inside the Asperger Studios Presents Stories. Today on the show, what do you get when you mix movies, pop culture, comic books, and so much more? You get my next guest, that's who. So sit back, relax, and grab your favorite beverage, and I'll see you on the other side. See you there. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Inside the Asperger Studios Presents Stories. Today on the show, I'm joined with Brian Hernandez from Zero Dark and Nerdy. Welcome to the show, Brian. Hey, Reed. How you doing, bud? Thank you so much for having me. I'm very, very happy to be here. No, it's not a problem having you. Actually, I started listening to your podcast a little bit. It sounds pretty cool. It's you and a bunch of guys talking about everything from pop, pop culture to movies to the, all that nerdy stuff everyone loves to hear. Yeah, yeah, it's been it's been a fun ride. We just celebrated five years. Uh, it started with with me and four of my really good guy friends, and as we've grown, uh, we've definitely added some some good female flavor to uh, to the podcast there. So uh, big shot big shout outs to uh, you know the ZDN family out there. So it's been a, it's been a been a fun ride, that's for sure. Anyways, I always like to ask start off with one very poseable question, and that is, so tell me about yourself. Yeah, sure thing. Um, just uh, just hit, I guess, not to date myself, early early forties, <laughs> not too long ago. This past July, born in Puerto Rico, uh, grew up in upstate New York, lived in Michigan. I've been here in Greensboro, North Carolina, now for the last twenty seven years, and um, just a, a very passionate. Uh, you know, family is everything to me. I have a beautiful twenty one year old daughter who just graduated college that's uh, enjoying just enjoying the real world right now before she really steps in on the job hunt and i have a, a beautiful wife i'm newly newly married just celebrated four months this past month so a big shout out to ashley who puts up with all my my nonsense and shenanigans congratulations and, uh, yeah thank you thank you uh, above all else just a big fan of pop culture i mean i was raised in a pop culture household with t you know tv shows video games and movies that that's how my family and i bonded and that's how we still continue to bond you know to this day whether if it's a movie night at, at one of our houses our group chats are, are filled with memes and gifts and uh you know and then of course we're big animal lovers as well too we all have rescue all have rescue dogs and uh, we're looking to hopefully get our next rescue dog here in the next uh, month or so. So we'll we'll see. But that's just uh, a little bit about myself. As mentioned, started Zero Dark Nerdy five years ago. I was going through a rough time. Um, you know, I suffer from depression and anxiety. So I needed an outlet to for something that I just love that didn't feel like work. And I uh, reached out to, uh, you know, a few of my really, really close friends to see if they wanted to join me on this journey. And especially because the conversations we have are literally like normal conversations we would just have on a daily basis and it's been uh, it's been great you know it's helped me get through some from uh through some tough times that's for sure and uh, i'm really glad i started it you know it's it's uh, it's a marathon definitely not a race uh we, mm -hmm. we're still growing still trying to build the fan base but uh as long as we're having a good time doing it we are going to continue to do this no matter if there's five people listening or, or five million that is so true. I mean, that is one of the big messages every podcaster should take when they want to jump in is don't look at your numbers straight away. I mean, so you have five people listening to your first episode. Big deal. That's five people that you had bef bes besides zero. Five is a number and just be proud of that. Yep. Uh, I could not agree more. I mean, the, the, our first listeners was literally just our close friends and family members, you know, so every little bit helps. I mean, we know that every episode is for everyone. We do cover a wide range of, to of pop culture topics from music, movies, games, comic books, the whole nine yards. But, uh, you know, we just try to enjoy ourselves. Uh, it's not scripted. You know, we just, I mean, we have a general theme for each episode, of course, but we just most importantly try to have a good time. Anyways, how did you, what got you into podcasting? So there was a studio that just opened up here in Greensboro called Press Play Studio. So big shout outs to, to Brody and the crew out there, which made the jump into podcasting fairly easy for us because all we really had to worry about was the content. Um, you know, they charged a fee. They did all the uh, editing, the post mix, all, all that stuff. So for the first 
really two seasons before I ended up getting my own equipment. Uh, it was primarily just press play. And then we would do a couple live podcasts with just a, a blue a blue microphone with the omnidirectional. So, you know, there may be, I'm sure there's a couple of episodes out there where the sound quality isn't exactly all that. And uh, yeah, that's what got me into it. Like I said, <clears throat> excuse me, pop culture has just been such a huge part of my life and such a, a main part of conversations that I have, whether at the workplace or with friends and family. I figured, why not? You know, why not take the leap into podcasting? As I mentioned before, I was kind of going through a little bit of a rough patch and really wanted to do something different, something to challenge myself. Mm-hmm. I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a me kind of person. I don't want to get, uh, you know, it's hard for me to kind of get my face out there, believe it or not, as I mentioned with the anxiety. So uh, I figured podcasting was the best choice because even before we got into video, it's not one of those things where it's like me, 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 me. I really wanted to include uh, good friends and family members to the podcasting experience. And it's been great. You know, my daughter's been on a few episodes and she's a big part of this team. And it's great to be able to share that with her. And hopefully, you know, one day she can take over the podcast. Anyways, would you say that podcasting has helped you with your anxiety and depression? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> That's a great, a great question, Reed, because I want to say yes and no. So the funny thing is, even five years in, I still get a little bit of anxiety before every episode, whether if I'm being interviewed or if I'm, especially if I'm the one interviewing and it is, whether if it's, uh, you know, someone like, like you and me, or if it's a celebrity or whatever, the nerves still kick in a little bit. And that's why I really like that we did our little pre-show segment. Yeah. I think I want to actually start incorporating that too, to get that ease in there. So, yeah. but, you know, besides just the first few minutes when the anxiety kicks in, I do believe it's definitely helped me with, with my depression, most importantly, just to be able to, you know, not just talk about entertainment, but remind people that it's okay to, you know, feel down that you have people out there that, that will support you and will do my best. I mean, I'm not a, li- a licensed psychologist by any means, but at the end of the day, uh, you know, I am a people person, even though I'm an in- introvert as well as an extrovert uh, from my many years of bartending. But I definitely think that it has helped me out with my depression, even when I do get anxiety before uh, before every show. Yeah, I mean, that reminds me. I mean, I get my first time doing a solo. Oh, my mm-hmm. God. Talk about anxiety through the roof. My yeah. heart was like beating like a mile a minute. I felt like I was running a race mm-hmm. and I'm just going. And it just, and I'm like, <laughs> what's going on here? And then, and I'd reached out to my life coach and I'm like, I can't do solos. I, my, I feel like my anxiety is just going like over, over. He's like, well, maybe you should just try talking to people Yeah, because then you feel better because you're bouncing ideas off of people and then you're more relaxed and this go on. Oh no, I was going to say, I could not agree more. I've only done one solo episode and it was horrible and and i even mixed it terribly so i am not a fan the only times i'll do a solo one is a quick little 30 second or 60 second review that i'll put on social media and that to me is my solo episode (laughs) anyways when you're not podcasting what would you what do you do to help that helps you with your anxiety oh oh another excellent question I, i like to get out and uh you know at least go for a walk around my neighborhood we live in a great area here in greensboro and this has been my home now. Well, not the home I'm at, but Greensboro has been my home for 27 years. So going out for a walk really helps trying to get some exercise in. I just recently signed up for a few gyms through uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield. It's kind of you pay one fee and then you get to go to all these other gyms so it doesn't get repetitive. Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I'd love to go more often than I do, uh, but th- that definitely helps. And then uh, big shout outs to Title Boxing Center out there. It's just a, a heavy bag workout. And I'm not a fan of cardio, which is why I say walk and not run. <laughs> so uh, Title Boxing Club has really helped me out with with my anxiety and depression. Just a, a nice little 30 to 45 minute workout of hitting the heavy bag. It's great stress relief. It's, uh, again, an excellent workout, great cardio. And then, um, you know, besides that, just simple things, playing video games, uh, reading comics, reading in general. I uh, love listening to music. I mean, music's definitely been my go-to for, for all my life, whenever I'm feeling, you know, if I'm feeling good, I have my, my feeling good playlist. If I need a a pick me up, I have my pick me up playlist. So uh, music's definitely been a big part of, of helping me through, uh, you know, Mm -hmm. bouts of anxiety and depression. So when did you realize you had anxiety? I mean, not to dig deep into your life, but when did you realize that? 
No, I, you know, I really enjoy talking about things like this, Reed. So I'm glad that we're able to co connect on it because, you know, a lot of people out there, uh, you know, may have questions and things like that. I've actually had a few friends reach out to me recently that just discovered that they may have anxiety and depression. And, you know, for instance, my dad didn't realize he had depression until he was in his late 40s. Mm -hmm. So with that being said, I think uh, the anxiety part was probably maybe early 20s. And, uh, you know, the depression was probably right around there as well. Uh, I was in the service industry. So, you know, being able to keep myself busy by either working at night as a bartender or being out would keep my mind off of it. So, I mean, at least for the last 20 years, uh, yeah, it's, it's been a big part of, of my life. And, you know, the rest of my family goes through it as well. And we're, we're very big on leaning mm -hmm. on each other and seeing what we can do to pick each other up. So we've all experienced it at different times in our lives. And we all know that it's something that we all deal with. So it's almost like uh, we send out the bat signal on, hey, you know, the, Janet needs some help or I may need to pick me up today. Let's let's go get some ice cream. Let's go watch a movie. Let's go do something. So, yeah, for about the majority of my life, I've realized that, uh, that I've had anxiety and depression. All right. Now let's get let's talk a little bit about your show. Mm -hmm. Who has been your most memorable guest? <laughs> so we've had a couple great interviews the last few years as well as in person um but i would say celebrity wise two really come to mind three uh theo rossi from uh from sons of anarchy fame he was juice on sons of anarchy he was a really great fun interview and then um arian moyed from succession as well as uh, he's in the mcu he was in inventing anna as her lawyer he was a really great and fun interview so celebrity wise, I would say those two, as I mentioned earlier, Michael Torix, always great to have on the show. Uh, just a, just a good time all around and uh, just a very honest and, and great person to, to be around. And during the pandemic, we were fortunate enough to get a few interviews in that we probably normally wouldn't have gotten, especially being a fairly new podcast. And I would say the most memorable one for me, especially because one of my co-hosts, Matthew, um, he went through a heart transplant about a year before we even started our podcast. So, um, you know, blessings to mm -hmm. him. And, uh, you know, he has his good days and his bad days, but he was able to, uh, we were able to interview one of our favorite bands, Fanagram, uh, for, you know, like half an hour, which is great. Normally with celebrity interviews, you only get an allotted amount of time, but because it was the pandemic and there wasn't much going on, we were able just to learn more about them and what really made them tick. And it was just great to see uh, that smile on Matt's face and, yeah, it was good. It was just emotional for me, but it was a very memorable and uh, I think one of my favorite podcast episodes to this day. All right. Now, what sources do you use to you guys to get your guests? Uh, quite a few. You know, when we first started, it was all social media and it's just reaching out, just hitting them, hitting them up. I usually try to use my personal account um, and just introduce myself. Hey, my name is Brian. Just want to say I'm a big fan of yours from, you know, project a or project B project C would love to have you on the show via zoom. Whenever you have some free time, let me know. Uh, you know, I will say in five years, the no's have definitely outnumbered the yeses. <laughs> so it is mm -hmm. a, it is a numbers game, but you just never know who's going to say yes. And I mean, we, 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 we try to reach out to everybody. I mean, having a listers on is fantastic, but we also, you know, we relate a lot more. And I mean, I'm not saying every a lister has had it easy, you know, everyone's had to start somewhere, but I mean, I'm also a big fan of what would be considered like your B and C characters of shows and just try to see, if we could, you know, get them on for, for opportunity. So that's the main way as we progressed, we did start getting more emails and contacts from PR companies and they'll reach out and say, Hey, we have this movie. Would you like to check it out? And if you, you know, if you like it, would you, you know, here's a list of the people that are available for interviews and here's some dates and times, let us know who you'd like to interview. Um, I mean, that's definitely been the best way to do it. Uh, you know, there is some rescheduling that happens, you know, cause stuff obviously comes up, it's life, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we definitely get more through the, through the PR. Now I still reach out on Instagram and we'll get some, yeah, you know, here, hit my agent up and reach out. And then the agent will reach back out and say, Hey, this person's like totally busy and doesn't have time. So <laughs> it, it gets a little exciting. Uh, cause you know, they reply back to you and then, uh, you know, then they have their, their, their gatekeepers. I get it that, that mm -hmm. will say, Hey, you know, we appreciate you being a fan, but this person's wrapped up for like the next five months. So try again later. And then uh, IMDb Pro, you know, I will say uh, what I love about it is it does give you 
contact info for the representatives of, you know, anyone in the IMDb database. And again, we've definitely had a lot more no's than we've had yeses. So it's just a matter of getting just your name out there and putting your best foot forward and, you know, giving it your best shot. I mean, that's all you can do. I mean, I know that feeling. Um, I reached out to a English actor that is, my mom and I are a, a huge fan of the show. Um, you ever hear of Death in Paradise? Yes, I have. Mm-hmm. And then um, with uh, the 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 sequel to that, After Paradise or Beyond Paradise? I have not heard of that one. No. Well, the ori- the second cop, the DI, I reached out to his agent because I found his contact list, and he's like. So he, so he goes to me, he sends me an email back. So you want so-and-so on the show on your podcast, right? And I'm like, yes, I'd like to have him. And he's like, when would you like? And I'm like, any time right now. He's like, well, Chris isn't available right now. He's filming until late November. Right. I'm back then. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I'll catch you back late November. Yeah. I mean, I've gotten so many of those. And I try to make sure I put a, a calendar reminder on there. And I mean, there's some where they, they want to see your, you know, they want to see your analytics. Hey, how many yeah. answers do you got? Where are you uh, at on this? And it's, it's always tough. I mean, as mentioned, we're five years in and I'm, I, we don't really spend a lot of money on ads to, to mm-hmm. boost. I mean, I'd rather have the fanship seem loyal and genuine, not saying that, you know, people that just get ads, but I mean, on top of that too, I just don't, I want to get, <laughs> I want to get as least spammed as humanly possible. <laughs> which seems impossible nowadays. I mean, with all the mm-hmm. amount of spam that, that's out there, but yeah, I mean, uh, I'm sure there's better ways for us to grow our audience. And I mean, it's not terrible, but it's definitely not Joe Rogan numbers, which I think is what everybody tries to be the standard yeah. for us. I mean, whether again, whether if it's five people listening or 500 million, whatever it may be, I mean, we just want everybody to have a good time and hopefully enjoy the content that we're presenting to them. Yeah, I get that. Now, what advice would you give to someone who wants to get into podcasting? Uh, the main thing is to is take the jump. You know, a lot of people wait for the, maybe uh, the perfect name. I, I will say when we started out, we were not zero dark nerdy. Uh, I, uh, I, wa- I combined multicultural and pop culture, and we were called <laughs> multi-popsural, which, you know, <laughs> the name, it was clever at the time, but a lot of people butchered it, and our, you know, our logos weren't really that great, and it was a little bit confusing, but I mean, I knew if we waited for the perfect name, then it would have taken longer for us to get the content out, and I wanted to get the ball rolling, you know, as I mentioned, just kind of going through a rough patch, uh, I was just ready to take on something new, and having the perfect name wasn't the number one thing on my to-do list it was let's get out there and let's record and see what happens so that's that's my best advice um you know i mean see if if in your area there is there are options for a podcast studio so you don't have to worry about the editing and mixing as much and you can get comfortable and figure out your topic and your audience uh you know most importantly so, I mean, that's my best advice. I mean, there's a lot of people that want to do it themselves. Not saying it's impossible. I know there's so many YouTube tutorials and stuff like that out there. But I think by us getting in with a studio that took care of all the stuff in terms of mixing and production, it definitely made it a lot more comfortable and easier for us to find our groove, especially for myself, because I do all the editing and mixing now to where I didn't have to worry about that. We would just go in, knock out an episode, and then we had their team there to be able to give us the final product. So, I mean, that's that's probably the best advice I can give. If you can, you know, have a studio in your in your area, definitely go check them out. Um, I think it's well worth it, depending on what the price is. Of course, do your homework, do your research. And uh, if you do want to, you know, have your own home studio, then definitely uh, there's a lot of YouTube tutorials out there for, for you to figure it out. But the most important advice, just take the leap. Go out and do it. All right. Now we get into some of the more of the funner questions, that everyone, <laughs> like more personal or off the wall. Let's start off with, where did you grow up? So I grew up in uh, a small town. So anytime I say Johnson City, people automatically assume Tennessee. But I grew up in Johnson City, New York. Very, very small town um, right outside of Binghamton, New York, about an hour south of Syracuse, three hours north of the city. And I lived there. I mean, I've lived here in Greensboro the majority of my life, but that's where my my childhood and my youth was spent, was uh, was in upstate New York. All right. What motivates you, inspires you, and drives you? (laughs) 
Uh, as I mentioned earlier, I'm a family man. So uh, my, my family is definitely a motivating factor. Uh, everyone from my parents, my, my uncles, my cousins, uh, you know, my, my beautiful wife, and of course, my, my amazing daughter is, uh, has always been my main source of inspiration. You know, uh, even the times that I've messed up and made some poor decisions, um, you know, she's just, uh, she's just, I mean, my whole family has just always been great. You know, they may not have supported a lot of the things I did and I have made some really dumb mistakes growing up, but at the end of the day, uh, knowing that we have each other's backs is, uh, something that's incredibly meaningful and important to me. So they, uh, they are by far my, my greatest motivation, especially my beautiful daughter, Jordan. All right. What's the best compliment you've ever gotten? <laughs> In, in terms of podcasting or in general? In general. <laughs> wow, that was a great, great question, Reed. Man, um, goodness gracious, greatest. I, I think it, 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 it all, again, even though I'm not a me guy and I don't, I don't need the verification or whatever, um, you know, anytime when, when uh, someone's like, whether if it's my sister or a friend, it's just like, hey, you're a great dad. Um, I think that's probably the best compliment mm -hmm. that any any parent can get. So, uh, you know, I, <laughs> even though now I'm married, it's, it's great to hear you're a great husband. But, uh, you know, that, that's definitely <laughs> that's that's up there with you're a great dad. So that's probably the best compliment I think I've ever gotten. All right. What's your biggest failure and what did you learn from that experience? <laughs> um, I would probably say the, the, the couple times where I didn't make the best decisions when it came to uh, drinking and driving. Let's just put it at that. I, I definitely consider those, consider that my biggest failure. You know, nobody ever wants to have the hand handcuffs slapped on them or be in the back of a police car. And, uh, you know, unfortunately I made that mistake in my, in, you know, my late twenties. So, uh, you know, anyone listening, do not drink and drive. It is definitely not worth it. It's definitely a low time in, in my life, but I had a, 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 you know, again, a wonderful family and amazing daughter that look past all that and help support me when I wasn't able to drive for, for many years because of, you know, just stupid decisions that, that were made. So that, that, that I consider probably one of my, uh, you know, biggest failures to me as, as an individual and as a person and as a family member. All right. Tell me about three influential people in your life and how they impacted you. <laughs> Excellent. I, uh, you know, I'll definitely say two right out of the box, my parents, um, you know, very, very humble beginnings. We uh, didn't have much growing up. I mean, we were on welfare, food stamps, the whole nine yards. And, uh, you know, now they're, they're living in Florida in a very nice house with a very great pool in the backyard. Um, they've overcome obstacles that most couples, especially nowadays, would not have made it through. And they're, they are by far my biggest inspiration. Um, you know, just uh, I, I just love them so much. And then I would say, you know, three, I tie, I tie it all in with, uh, you know, the rest of the family, to be honest with you. Uh, my sisters, I have two fraternal twin sisters that are just absolutely amazing. My daughter, my beautiful wife, uh, you know, her, her patience and her level of cool. And uh, I, she's uh, by far, you know, uh, it's, she's just wonderful. I, I can't say enough about Ashley. She's, uh, you know, she's my person. Uh, so, yeah, I know I, I know you said three, but I just had to lump it all in there. <laughs> all right. What makes you feel inspired or like your best self? <laughs> uh, I would probably say I'm a big fan of motivational movies, motivational speeches, like that will get me going, the Rocky speech, the, the pick yourself back up that you're going to get knocked down. Those are big ones. And then, uh, you know, of course, everything I try to do, I try to do for my family and my daughter. You know, I just want to do my best to make them proud to, you know, remind them, especially my daughter, that if you want something in life, you got to work hard for it. It's not going to come overnight and it's not going to be an easy ride and it's not going to be perfect. You know, I, even though I mentioned my failure, my failures earlier, you know, it's things like that, that where you, if you don't learn from your failures, then you're just destined to make even more failures in the future or even in the present. So, you know, for any time that anyone's messed up, just learn from it and, you know, dig down to see what you learn from it to, you know, hopefully help you become a better person. All right. Finish this sentence. I am at my best when. 
Uh, I know this may seem lame. I'm at my best when uh, when I'm around my family. You know, I uh, I truly, truly love uh, my parents. You know, I wish that we could see each other more often. We've been trying to convince my dad to move back. My mom's all in on moving back, but my dad's uh, a little bit more. We got to we got to talk him into. But I'm at my best when my daughter's around. You know, I can definitely see a mood change in myself when I go long bouts without seeing her. Uh, her mom and I co-parent very well, and and big shout out to her mom Heather. Yeah, but she lives about three hours away. But it has gotten easier now that she's been driving for you know the last six years or whatever, and now that she's done with college and able to uh, you know see us both a little bit more. But I can definitely I, I see I can definitely ch- see what's going on with my mood when I go about a month without seeing her, spending time with her. So we do a lot of FaceTime to uh, make up for that. All right, if you could turn back time and talk to your eighteen year old self. What would you tell him about where you are now in life? <laughs> oh man, I love these questions, Reed. I really do. Uh, this is a, this is a fun podcast. Um, I would tell him first and foremost, don't be an idiot. Do not drink and drive. Um, and then just secondly, I, I'm a I'm a firm believer in everything. Really does happen for a reason. You know, I've made some some good choices in life. I've made some bad ones. Everything has gotten me to where I am today. And I'm thankful and I'm blessed for, for where I'm at. It could be, it could be, could it be better? Sure. It could always be better, but most importantly, it could always, always be worse. So I would just tell uh, my 18 year old self to continue to hit the books in college. Uh, But most importantly, you know, be weary of people in your circle. Um, You know, I've had to weed some people out of my circle uh, as I got a little bit older, just because uh, it just wasn't, good for for my my psyche and and really just uh you know motivation or anything like that so uh be wary of the people in my circle and uh yeah most importantly uh do not drink and drive (laughs) all right if you can have a billboard with anything on it what would it be and why (laughs) uh i'm a big fan of uh you know no surprise here pop culture and uh one of my go-to's is days of confuse like that's my go-to if i needed just like a quick pick me up or just need you know whether if it's background noise or or just like a a, a feel good movie i really love days confuse and on the billboard i would probably just have matthew mcconaughey up there with his l-i-v-i-n living you know that just kind of mm-hmm. just sums it up for me his his attitude throughout the whole movie and just in general i mean he seems like a guy i definitely would love to share a, a drink with and just get to know. I mean, I started reading Green Lights not too long ago, and I need to finish it. I'm a very, very slow reader, and <laughs> that's one thing I need to work on with myself. But, uh, you know, he's just incredibly motivating to me in, in terms of just, like, his speeches, his book, and, and everything else, and, and seems like an all-around great guy. So um, in terms of inspiration that's not family-related, I would probably say Matthew McConaughey. And, uh, yeah, I would have him from uh, from Days and Confuse on a billboard just saying living, you know, L-I-V-I-N, living, man. <laughs> no, what do you think the world will look like in five years from now? We had this discussion pre-show, uh, <laughs> Reed, so mm-hmm. there is no telling. I don't think we're going to have, uh, you know, I don't think it's going to be all flying cars. I mean, I know that there's some out there now. I don't know if Teslas will completely take over the uh, the highways. It's going to be interesting it, with everything going on overseas, and now we got UFOs and aliens. In five years, I don't know, man, to be honest with you. I mean, I have a feeling with AI, as long as we're not on our way to AI becoming Skynet, and uh, we're all just a bunch of John Connors trying to make it out there, I think I think we'll be okay. But uh, it's going to be interesting to see with AI what's going to happen in five years with technology and everything else. I mean, mm-hmm. I don't think we're too far off from some of the things that we've seen in movies in terms of, you know, minority report and things like that. VR has definitely come up uh, significantly in the last few years. And I mean, technology is just forever on the move. So, you know, I don't think flying cars and jetpacks like the Jeffersons, but uh, we'll, we'll see. It's going to be interesting. All right. What was your favorite subject in school? <laughs> history always always history big big fan of history i think it was my best subject i wasn't really that great at math english uh spanish i was pretty good but i you know i had a a little bit of an advantage because it was my my first language so i would say history and spanish all right would you consider yourself an introvert or an extrovert 
Definitely both. Um, if I had to pick one, I would definitely say introvert, especially as I've gotten older. Um, you know, I was definitely more of an extrovert from really 18 to about 35. And then after 35, I just really had to buckle it down and, and uh, you know, focus more on myself, on my mental health, on just my physical health, and, and really just calm down from, from the nightlife that comes with being in the service industry for 15 years, really from 20 to 35. So uh, I will say if I have to pick one for sure, especially this day and age, I'm definitely more of an introvert. All right. If you could be remembered for one thing, what would it be and why? <laughs> I really love these questions for one thing. I, I would hope it would be just that, uh, you know, I made my, my friends and family happy and, and most importantly, laugh. Life mm -hmm. is just tough uh, at the end of the day. And the more we can just, uh, you know, roll with the punches and, and laugh at what we can and be good to each other. You know, I, I hope that's what I'm remembered for is just being being there for, for my family and friends when they needed it, but, you know, most importantly, making them laugh, whether if they needed a laugh or not. Um, you know, I just, I just think laughter is honestly some of the best medicine that that's out there. All right. Tell me about where you are now in life. <laughs> Still growing. I, I will always continue to grow un until the day I pass away. I definitely am, am far from perfect. I don't really believe in perfection. I, I, I think that we all as people should continue to grow and just be better to one another. You know, financially, could I use a couple more bucks in the bank account? Yeah, of course. But, uh, you know, just growing uh, professionally with, with my role, I'm coming up four years as, a, as an IT recruiter in a space that I never thought I'd ever be in and I ended up really, really enjoying. I get pure just joy and and just satisfaction trying to help good people find good jobs. Um, so, you know, continuing to grow with the company I'm at, continuing to grow Zero Dark Nerdy. And uh, as a newlywed, I just want to be a, you know, be the best husband I can be. I want to continue to be the best dad I can be and continue to be the best son, brother, cousin, just relative I can be. Now we get to the part of the show everyone wants to hear. But before that, I just want to ask my listeners out there to please like and share this show and check out Zero Dark Nerdy as well. So, Brian, what is your favorite word? <laughs> I don't think I've ever been asked that, Reed. You, yeah, oh, I love this. You can have me back on whenever. I can't wait to interview you. <laughs> I would say my, my favorite word is magnificent. I just think that once you, once you say something's magnificent, it's better than good. It's better than okay. It's mm -hmm. just magnificent. <laughs> all right what's your least favorite word uh moist just just yeah. just that word leaving my mouth it felt disgusting <laughs> no. all right what turns you on creatively spiritually and emotionally mm. Mm. uh creatively i just love seeing you know I, i'm i'm a visual person so creatively just seeing other people do their thing and just getting inspiration from that is fantastic. Uh, emotionally, I would probably say, you know, again, family, uh, you know, friends and spiritually, even though, uh, you know, I, I came up Catholic, had a communion, all that stuff. I mean, we're not a big church going family, but I do believe that there is a higher power out there. And I do, you know, try to pray every night for, for mm -hmm. the health and wellness of, of loved ones. So, um, you know, that it's just kind of like, I, I don't feel like you have to go to church to, to, you know, talk to God or whoever, um, you know, I feel like you can do that at any time. So those are the, the three. All right. What turns you off? <laughs> um, I would, I would say that my, I think my biggest turnoff uh, is, is people with just horrible, horrible attitudes that, that think they're better than everyone else. I think that will just literally just shut me down. I mean, I, I don't care if you're, if you're a garbage man or the president of the United States, you know, I'm going to treat you with respect unless I'm not treated with respect. So when, uh, when people may think that they have more than someone or can talk down to people, especially in the service industry, it, it, that really does bug me, you know, just because uh, someone's a waiter or a bartender or a busboy doesn't mean that they deserve to be talked down to by any means or a maid or whoever. So just people that can be real ugly towards others is a gigantic turnoff. All right. What is your favorite word? No, I mean, what is your favorite curse word? 
<laughs> so I, I swear I was British in a past life. And if you listen to the podcast, I want to warn you now there for the most part, for the exception of some interviews there, there is some swearing in there, but I got to go with old faithful. Fuck. That's, that's my favorite. <laughs> All right. What? Did I say sound... that? I'm sorry. I, I didn't even ask. No. Yeah, you can definitely. Okay. <laughs> what sound or noise do you love? <laughs> I tell you what, I'm a big fan of, of uh, noises coming out of the kitchen when uh, when people are cooking, you know, and that's just uh, a whole plethora of the smells, but the noises, especially when uh, making pasta, you know, hearing the water bubble for the for the spaghetti is, is fantastic, and then uh, I, I think I think everyone's favorite noise when they were little is the uh, you know end of day school bell. I think that's still <laughs> enjoy every now and again when I have my uh, my recurring dreams of being back in school. The school bell still. Uh, you know, it was definitely a pick me up. All right. What sound or noise do you hate? <laughs> Nails on a chalkboard for sure. And then uh, I, I, I never understood this. People that just rev their engine for no reason at all whatsoever. It just bugs the heck out of me. Like you're not impressing anyone at all when you're doing that. Yeah, so yeah, that's uh, that's probably my biggest uh, annoying sound is just engine revving for no reason at all whatsoever. Just trying to look tough, or uh, you know, fellas, if you think you're impressing the ladies out there by doing it, I can promise you, you're not. And this is coming from 15 years of hearing it <laughs> from being a bartender. It's just nothing but flex. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Exactly. All right. What is your favorite color? I gotta go uh, green. I am a, a big Philadelphia Eagles fan. So uh, green has been my favorite color for, for quite some time. I am partial to red and black as well. And then, of course, blue and yellow. <laughs> but you know, out of all of them, though, I got to go with uh, with green. All right. What's your least favorite color? Hmm. I got to probably go with orange. Just uh, even though I, I, I love Syracuse basketball. That's probably the only orange that I can stand. But in general, yeah, just not. And, I'm, and when my wife hears this, she's probably going to be so mad at me because he's a big Tennessee fan and they're orange. But just in general, the color orange doesn't do much for me. All right. What profession other than your own would you like to attempt? Mm. Like realistically? I guess. <laughs> Uh, other than my own, I think it would be fun, even though I'd have to obviously do something about my anxiety. My hands do shake a little bit more than the average person. Uh, right now, they, they're, you know, they're pretty good. But normally when the anxiety acts up, my hands shake, uh, shake uh, quite a bit. But I think a game show host would be a, a pretty fun profession to get into. We do host a lot of trivia nights here. I only do about one every couple of weeks, but a big shout out to my buddy, Jerry, who's a part of the team. He does six trivia nights a week. So wow. I think, uh, <laughs> yeah, I think a game show host would, would be fun. What profession would you not like to do? Anything involving wrangling like wild animals. I'm just no alligators. Don't, I don't do snakes, any reptiles in general. Like if anything like that, no, 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 I'm good. I'm, I am good on anything having to do with wrangling reptiles. All right. If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? <laughs> uh, so I DJed for a while, and it, it's something that brought me a lot of joy. And I, I, I still do it on occasion, like maybe, you know, once a year, something like that. And I'm very particular about it. I think it'd be pretty funny if God was like, all right, Brian, we need you on the ones and twos over there. <laughs> All right. When you arrive at heaven, who would you like to meet? Mm. Um, well, I'd love to, uh, you know, first and foremost, see my grandparents first, give them a big hug. And then uh, in, in terms of celebrities, I've always wanted to meet. I'm a big Sinatra guy. would love to meet Frank Sinatra, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Heath Ledger. I mean, there, uh, you know, this could be a podcast episode all by itself, but uh you know, I would definitely say Sinatra and Hendrix. And then, um, you know, the list kind of goes on and on, but those would probably be my big two in terms of celebrities. All right. Now, what podcast other than your own do you recommend my audience listen to? <laughs> so uh, we're, we're good friends with an Australian pop culture podcast. So if you are a fan of Australian accents, 
and uh, the, you know, these two are fantastic. Uh, it's called Popcorn Podcast. So they, uh, they get some really, really good interviews. I mean, they've interviewed way bigger names than we've ever dreamed of as they, you know, they do this as a profession. They report on, on entertainment and movies, and then they have a podcast on it as well. So, uh, you know, big shout out to Lee and Tim out there at Popcorn Podcast uh, out of Australia. And then um, in terms of other podcasts besides your, besides your own read, <laughs> um, we, uh, there's the Fangirls Podcast out in uh, California. It's always great for Julie to give like the, the female perspective on, on a lot of things out there, pop culture and entertainment. They cover some pretty, I don't want to say unique, but some, uh, you know, some fandoms that we don't normally cover like Outlander. Things like that, um, The Witcher, or yeah, I think it's The Witcher. Yeah, so yeah, uh, but, um, yeah those are probably the the big two. And then uh, I re- we really love the um, oh my gosh, why am I drawing a blank right now? They just have the the documentary on HBO, the one with Jason Bateman, and um, oh my goodness, I'm drawing a blank. Smartless, Smartless podcast. In terms of like, I guess you would say big big name podcasts out there. Smartless is definitely an entertaining podcast. Will Arnett's on it, and then the uh, gentleman from, I believe, Will and Grace, the the sidekick. I can't remember what he's what he's from, but uh, the three of them together is pretty hysterical. And finally, where can people find out more about you and Zero Dark Nerdy? <laughs> so we do have a uh, website, courtesy of our good friends over at Zipster. Uh, it's popculturepodcast.com. I'm still surprised to this day that we were able to lock that down. So uh, there you can find our podcast episodes, links to our social media. We're, uh, we're pretty much all over the board when it comes to social media. Zero Dark Nerdy on Facebook, ZDN Podcast on IG, uh, ZDN underscore podcast on IG, I apologize. And then it's ZDN Podcast on Twitter. But our, our big ones, I would say, is Facebook, IG, and then our website, which we also have our YouTube page, Zero Dark Nerdy, which we're finally starting to utilize that a little bit more. Get some more, uh, you know, visual time out there, not just the audio. And then uh, you can find us on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, really anywhere that that uh, podcasts are hosted, you'll find Zero Dark Nerdy. And that's it, everybody. That was Brian Hernandez from Zero Dark Nerdy. Thank you, Brian, for coming on the show. Hey, thank you for having me, Reed. I really appreciate it. This was fun. You threw some uh, some good curveballs out there at me. So uh, this was definitely a, a memorable, I will always remember this interview. <laughs> All right, and I'll see everyone in the next one.